Welcome to Nevada News Makes on the broadcast today. Clark County Commissioner Jim Gibson for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Nevada Newsmakers tapings in Las Vegas are brought to you by the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce. From your house to the White House, the folks at DD Roofing can get it fixed with their eyes closed. Nearly 200,000 Nevadans work in retail businesses, supporting families and the community. Nevada's retail businesses generated over $2 billion in sales tax revenue in one year, including nearly $700 million to help our schools. Shop around and see all that Nevada's retailers offer our state. We're the Retail Association of Nevada, representing thousands of Nevada businesses. Businesses that work for Nevada. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers Broadcast Headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers a legendary political figure in the state of Nevada, Clark County Commissioner Jim Gibson. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Good to be back. Didn't know I was legendary. Well, you and your family have quite a history, sir. Um, when we first met you, you were mayor of Henderson. That's true. And, uh, but, but a very storied career. Um, so let me start out, first of all, um, You've got Tick Segerblum coming on to the county commission. His big issue um, for the last several years has been marijuana. Marijuana is now legal both recreationally and uh, medicinally in the state of Nevada. How do you feel about it at this point in time? Well, I think the county has done a good job. I haven't really been on the commission at a time when we were making decisions about um, applications and uh, commitments to licenses. But we're doing a good job. It's new for everyone. I'm sure there are mistakes being made along the way. Uh, the people that I know that opened up, uh, were successful in getting licenses and open facilities are credible people. They're good business people. Were you a little surprised at how many respectable and credible people applied for those licenses? I mean, heads of casino companies that were bumped out pretty quickly by the Gaming Control Board. But I mean, it was a stunning list. Yeah, it, it, it really is close to a who's who uh, in the business community. And they've invested tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars all in. Uh, so it's important for us to, to manage it properly on the government side. Uh, and we're working very hard to do just that. What do you think about uh, the idea of these uh, marijuana lounges uh, because right now, people purchase marijuana, but unless it's their own home, there's legally no place to smoke it. Now, we know people are going to buy it and smoke it anyway, uh, but what do you think about the idea of uh, marijuana lounges? Well, I don't know that I would impose that on anyone. Uh, the reality is I've only spoken to a couple of marijuana licensees who are interested in doing it because they can't, I really think they are having a difficult time figuring out what the revenue piece is, what's the return on that investment? Uh, but I imagine at some point in time we're going to see them because as you say, there's no other legal place to consume marijuana today other than their homes. And if you're one of 40 million people who visit here, uh, you're going to 
if you're if you buy it and, and want to consume it here, you're going to have to do it illegally. So I, I think that at some point in time it'll happen. It's not something that's my initiative. Uh, I have heard uh, Tick Sagerbloom talk about it, and he favors doing something soon. At some point in time, when we're able to get a number of people in the industry to help us understand how it ought to work, so how, so that we might regulate it then uh, there will be a discussion about it. I think until we understand it, it would be premature for us to you know, strike out and try and do something. Uh, but at this <clears throat> point, you're not against it? No, I'm not. <clears throat> I don't oppose um, the lounges. It's more a matter of functionally, how do we regulate them? Uh, how do they work for the licensees? Do, will they work for the licensees? The thing that I, that I am concerned about is that we have a whole lot of consumption that is happening illegally. And we've, we've voted as a state uh, to legalize it. Um, so there are some disconnects along the way. Well, mm -hmm. and, and the public voted to legalize it 13 years before <clears throat> the government got behind that plan. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting to see um, how many people are purchasing marijuana beyond the tourists, but how many locals across the state are purchasing marijuana. Who knew? That, that many of our friends were consuming marijuana <laughs> this many years since the 60s and 70s. Well, it's amazing to me. I, I don't know that in the beginning I imagined that it would pass. Um, and then the margins have only, as, as if you look at the polling data, the margins have only increased. So, uh, no, I think it, it was a surprise to a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> let's change the topic to uh, growth. Um, we're seeing discussions again now about Ivanpah and seeing the growth moving to that area, uh, mainly designated because of the airport, I would uh, presume, um, and that may be 20, 30 years down the road, but still that's what airports do is plan that far in advance. Um, but we're also seeing housing developments being proposed down towards the south. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about the water supply? I mean, the valley is truly heading towards 3.5 million people, according to John Ensminger. Well, the constraint, I think, really is um, water. It always will have to be the first thing we talk about. We have an ambitious and effective to this point uh, plan. We have a 50-year horizon on our resource management plan. But there are a lot of assumptions there. And I think that we're going to have to have a, a much broader discussion with a great, great many more people than have had their voice in the discussion up to this point. But in order to prepare, uh, we've needed to do a Public Lands Act. Uh, in order to uh, prepare, we have to also engage the development community and what kind of densities should we really be looking at um, and what kind of attainability and affordability needs to be built into at least some portion of what we're going to do because the, we have an, a population of people here who cannot afford housing. It is not attainable for them. And the uh, homeless population will be somewhat a, a group of people that have to be um, afforded the right kind of coverage, the right kind of, I don't know if opportunity is the right word because I don't know how, what, how the, the opportunities are really limited. I just know that we need to deal with homelessness and all of that will be a part of the discussion in terms of growth. Uh, the first piece though will always be, is there water? And how do we, how does the uh, the development and the growth affect the water supply and its viability over the long term. Uh, right now we've determined at the Southern Nevada Water Authority that we're going to work harder on conservation and conservation education and messaging. And that will always be a really important part. It won't be the only part, but it'll be a really important part. There are some things that have happened very recently that uh, we can really sigh a sigh of relief over. Right up until now, uh, we've been incented to remove water from Lake Mead and inject it into the aquifers and store it to what we call bank that water because we were not allowed to bank water in the lake itself. We could bank muddy river water and um, virgin, virgin river water, but we could not bank Lake Mead Colorado river water. The, the stuff that is other than those two rivers. Now we can, assuming the seven states sign the agreement. Nevada was the first to sign the new agreement. That'll give us the ability to 
conserve water in the lake. It'll help the lake and its sustainability over time. And of course, that's the lifeblood for this valley. Um, <clears throat> you, you bring up the homeless. Mayor Goodman was on the program earlier uh, in the week. And, um, you know, they're, they're funding another $20 million towards the homeless uh, encampment that's uh, down there uh, close to Fort Master Lane and Main Street. Um, what is the homeless population of the county beyond um, the city? Well, I think our last count, I, I don't know that it's, it's all about how you define homelessness, but we have thousands. 6,000, I think, is the number that comes to mind. Uh, but I don't know that that's everyone. Um, you know, the school district has a definition, uh, and I think in their definition, if you if you reside in a, a daily, weekly, right. you're considered homeless. Uh, but <clears throat> fundamentally, if you don't have a roof over your head and you don't have a place to prepare a meal, then you're really homeless. And so it is working through, you know, all of that to try and bring a roof over people's head and shelter and a place where food can be prepared. And we're, we're very conscious of the challenge. In fact, I just left a meeting on homelessness that um, Marilyn Kirkpatrick and I have been convening for several months now. And we're really closing in on some things that will be initiatives that will help us begin to address in a different way homelessness. Can you share? Well, I, I think that fundamentally what I can say, although I, I can't go all the way to the end because I don't know the end, but fundamentally we've got to have place for them. We've got to have housing for them. And we have uh, a shortage. We're, we're down to zero in terms of uh, housing. So we've identified some properties uh, that are uh, at BMI, excuse me, BLM uh, properties around the valley that are in Clark County. And uh, I think our proposal will include uh, building uh, or converting some current facilities to um, housing for some number of homeless people, encouraging the development by the development community of some attainable and affordable housing, finding resources to help make those profitable enough that there is a value proposition in it for uh, the private sector because government just can't do it all itself. But a, a, a series of initiatives that are both government uh, initiated and funded and managed and uh, the business community and partnership with government, um, there are things that we're discussing in real, real detail. And we'll be doing some things. Actually, I think we're moving to try and put something on an agenda this year before the year ends. So there, th we really are starting to hit the areas that are most fundamental to us. Now, getting a home or getting a place for a person to be that is shelter is only a part of it. There are uh, multiple issues, health issues, mental health issues uh, that all have to be addressed. Uh, but the beginning point has got to be getting something over their heads where a meal can be prepared. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with more with Jim Gibson after this timeout. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Wall in South Virginia. Yeah. How do you shed some light on a better economy? Start with growth inspired by Valley Electric Association. We're a member-owned power company that puts Nevada first, and we're doing big things like providing prosperity by securing renewable energy projects. For Nevada, that means more jobs and more opportunities, all for a strong statewide economy. In other words, together, we're doing powerful things. Visit us at vea.coop to learn more. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. 
Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Clark County Commissioner Jim Gibson. For anybody who wants a job right now in Southern Nevada, if they don't have a job, it's their fault, isn't it? There are lots of jobs. Uh, we did a uh, job fair, my office, uh, with um, the uh, city of Henderson and Jerry Schroeder, who's a city councilwoman over there, did a job fair. We had over 500 people show up for the job fair. We had, um, I think we had uh, between 50 and 75 uh, employers show up. But most importantly, there were 100 plus people who walked out of the job fair with employment. There were opportunities that did not go filled, uh, where they just couldn't find people who were interested. And uh, my view is that they may not, it might not be the optimal job for them, but it is an entry point. Right. right. And there are lots of opportunities for people to upgrade their employment. Uh, we have people that are underemployed and they, 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 they really need, in order to have the right kind of quality of life, so that their family can feel the benefits of life here in this country, in this state, in this city. Uh, we need to be able to match up jobs with people and talent. I remember Mishana Squaga when she was running John Squaga's Nugget up in uh, Sparks, um, talking about how, yes, you know, you join the company as an entry-level person, but if you show any gumption, <coughs> within the first couple of weeks, you're going to be promoted. So, yes, definitely an entry-level job. You lived through a period um, in Southern Nevada where 5,000 people a month were moving here. We're heading into that kind of territory again, are we not? With Genting's property, uh, with the expansion of the convention center, which I've said several times over the last week, it's so huge, it's almost impossible to realize how huge it is until you drive around those blocks and see how far it's gonna move. Um, you also have Wynn uh, putting out n up another property. Uh, I mean, the, the list goes on. Um, so do you think we're gonna return to a time of four to 5,000 people a month moving to Las Vegas because of the opportunity? I'm not so sure that we're set up for that right today in terms of the home building community and the dwelling place community, those that do multifamily and single family. Um, but you, and, and let me just interrupt for a second. Are, you know, a lot of builders in Northern Nevada still can't believe the recession is over and they're extremely cautious about going out on a limb. Is that the same feeling you get from the builders here in Southern Nevada? There is concern. Um, they've, they've told me that, so I, I don't know it because I observe it. I know it from what I've been told. The challenge for a lot of them is land availability, and that was one of the motivations for doing a public lands um, recommendations for a federal change to the disposal boundary around this valley. Uh, the the challenges that we face are that our workforce that could find work somewhere else left. Right. And they're coming back, they're migrating back, and we're finding workers. And I think there was a time when people worried about whether or not they were going to be able to staff up. Uh, but the, the construction trades have, uh, have been able to satisfy the needs up to this point. You know, we have the Madison Square Garden, we have uh, the uh, uh, Caesar's folks going to build a, a, some, some, a bunch of convention space. I mean, right. we yeah, have, Drew. yeah, that's right. We have, uh, what, 18 to $20 billion that is uh, coming out of the ground or about to be coming out of the ground. And that tells us that there's going to be a housing impact. Um, whether it is four or 5,000 people moving here yet, I don't know. I, I'm thinking it'll be a while before we see those kind of numbers. But clearly, we're going to begin to grow again. And that's, that's a reality. That's just what happens. There will be tens of thousands of jobs. And uh, there will be opportunity for people in this valley to move around. But there will also be vacancies that will be filled by people who are looking for a new opportunity moving into this valley. So we're going to see an increase in population. So, so what's your biggest concern with the growth that's coming? I mean, apart from the housing part that we've talked about. 
Well, I, I, there are a couple of things. First off, our, our traffic situation, our mobility situation in the valley is difficult. Um, <laughs> That's putting it very kindly, Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you've driven on these roads. You <laughs> yes, know sir. how tough it is. And we have got to, to find the resources, but we've got to find the ideas. And we've got to be willing to do some things we haven't ever done before. So I think that we're going to see more mass transit talk and hopefully action. Uh, we're going to see... Can I, uh, can I ask you about the cost effectiveness of that? Because that's always the thing that comes <clears throat> up, uh, especially in the editorial pages of your local yeah. newspaper, um, which is that you, know, you can fund these projects, uh, but they don't pay for themselves. Well, one of the challenges that you have is if you, it's always going to be that way unless you look at the cost of adding another travel lane or 10 more travel lanes and acquiring property you don't currently own in the right-of-way. The, the problem that we have is that we're pretty much built out in much of the transportation system we've got in the valley. And there are some things I've proposed, uh, some work that would ex extend the 215 sum across uh, the east side of the valley. It won't solve the problem, but it will offload some of the 95 and the 215. There are other things that we've got to do. Much of what we're doing now will help in some ways, but not like we would all hope. So as, as big as the current projects have been, there's still an awful lot more that we're going to have to do. So I, I, I'm saying to myself, well, you know, I think we need to look at the mass transit solutions for, you have 100,000 people that work on the Las Vegas Strip. We need a way to get those people in and out so that the roadways can be used more by our tourists that are the bread and butter in this valley. Uh, we've got to do something in terms of getting people to a mass transit solution. So we need express routes that are buses or whatever else might be out there and available. We need to carpool more. Um, there, are, we need, there are lots of companies that have begun to allow people to work remotely from home. And that is something that has been growing over the years. I ran a company where we had people who were really critical to the operation, but were not in the office. Right. They were remote. Yes, uh, in, in my business, it's the same thing. Everybody helicopters in. Uh, there's nobody in the office but me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. More with Jim Gibson when we come back. Nevada Newsmakers tapings in Las Vegas are brought to you by the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Are you a homeowner who's interested in remodeling or building a home? At Design Outdoor, we can show you how adding natural or manufactured masonry stone can add beauty and value to your home. And we refer only the best contractors. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. One of the most psychologically damaging things parents can do to children in divorce is disparage one another which is why I can't believe I even have to make this commercial. Half of your kid's genetics come from this person you're spewing hate about. Your children have the right to love you both, but more than that, they deserve to love themselves. Marilyn York might be a men's rights divorce attorney, but this is for every selfish parent. Shut up. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. 
And back on Nevada News, Meg, as we continue our conversation with Clark County Commissioner Jim Gibson, um, one of the stories that I was excited broke just before I came to Las Vegas for this trip um, was uh, that Express West has been purchased by this Florida company, and now the idea of the train going from Las Vegas to Victorville seems to be becoming more of a reality. Are you buying into that? Well, I, let, let's put it this way. I hope that there can be a solution like that. You know, we've been giving money to California for highway construction uh, out of the Convention Authority budget for decades, more than a decade. For, for the 15? Yes, we, we contribute, not just the 15, but we've, I, when I was on the Convention Authority board, I think the number was $10 million a year. And the lifeblood, 38%, when I last knew, 38% of the visitors came in by car from Southern California. And if that's the reality, then we really need to hope for another way to get those people here. So I've, I've hoped. I haven't seen enough that tells me it's really going to happen, but maybe this most recent development will mean that, and we're hoping for that. Well, Richard Branson being involved is a good sign. Uh, Sig Rogich was on the program, not quite as optimistic, but we shall see. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Please come back soon. Thank you. All right, and we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also download podcasts of the show free of charge or watch us on YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast.